let's talk about the complexity of differentiable ILP. And we'll talk about this in terms of the number of weights that are used, because that directly relates to space and time. So they talk in the paper about primary and secondary collection vectors. And so you are summing over the number of clauses for each template uh, for each um, target predicate. And one set of vectors you're multiplying by two times the number of ground atoms times the number of inference steps. And here is three times the number of ground atoms times the number of constants. Um, in general, based on kind of how they approach the problem, one would expect the number of constants to usually be larger than T. Um, but I think part of the reason why they put both there, because from a complexity standpoint, <coughs> just, you know, you would take the higher one. Uh, they could be doing it, you know, in a theoretical correct manner with T, uh, T is going to be equal to the number of intentional predicates times the number of constants in the worst case. So that would actually be bigger. And that's in the classical case, even worse with us. So I did a little bit of uh, looking because I wanted to see, okay, the number of templates is the source of complexity, the experimental results, seem to show some scalability issues and all the follow on papers complained about complexity, but didn't show anything. So I thought, well, let's just kind of pencil it out here. And let's look at this, uh, you know, uh, number of um, clauses that we have to generate. So that can be bounded by the following. So looking at the number of clauses per template, uh, we can look at the uh, number of predicates involved. So, um, which we're picking from the number of extensional predicates, and we got this int i, which is the number of intentional predicates that were permitted because the template limits that number. But just to put it there, let's say that. And you've got uh, a bunch of spaces to fill. So, this is the arity uh, and you know, this action, this quantity here can also be expressed as a factorial. Uh, what kind of messes it up a little bit is you got this extra V, which is the number of uh, existential, um, existentially quantified variables you have. So whether it's factorial or this thing that's a tighter bounded rule, really you're going to depend on the values of these numbers. And then you got another exponent here for the maximum body size. So that's like a lot of stuff. Now, writing it this way with the product, uh, each template, these numbers are going to look a little bit different uh, because you could have some templates, like you saw in the example, you have the one that had only eight clauses and the other had like, you know, 56, which was much worse. But for purpose of a complexity analysis, let's just assume everything's kind of the same. Well, now that guy goes into an exponent. And so if you kind of use the assumptions from the paper, you get a big constant times the intentional predicates times uh, uh, P to the fourth, which is uh, uh, kind of big. But let's not forget that's got to get plugged into the rest of the stuff. And so you end up essentially with, you know, this giant constant, you know, con number of constants to the third, number of intentional predicates, which that might be small, but you're a quintic in the number of uh, predicates. And then, um, yeah, so this is also the what has been mentioned in several other papers uh, talking about. They'll either say it's quintic or they'll say it's factorial in the argument size, but um, all amounts to about the same thing depending on the set of assumptions. 